Hello everyone, welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson number nine, we'll be looking at adding animations to the player. But first, let's take up the challenge from last lesson. Your first task was to set up level two the way you want. Your code might be slightly different than mine, or even vastly different, depending on what you did. If you were following along with the example I gave, the code will look something like this. First, you set up the background, and then place the player on the screen, just like before. We only had two enemies, and one of them was flying to the left. Next, I used a bunch of for loops in order to set up all the platforms. Notice the trick I used in order to space them out properly. I used the same starting position, but I used different numbers in the range to create gaps. Notice how I just skip number four in order to make that first gap. The code continues downwards until we reach the endpoint castle. Just make sure that you have level to set equal to level three. The next step is respawning the player at the beginning of the level. In order to reset the level when the player runs out of health, make sure you remove the health check inside the player loop. We no longer want these two lines of code in the player loop. Instead, we'll be checking the player's health inside the levels. For instance, in level two, in the loop, I check if Astro's health is below or equal to zero. If so, I set the room equal to level two. Next, I check if Astro's Y position has gone below or equal to negative 400, in which case I also set the room equal to level, level two. Finally, setting up level three shouldn't be too difficult. It's almost the same process as setting up any of the other levels. If you need the numbers I've used here, here they are. Now, let's look at animation. Animations make games look much better, even if they're really simple. They're created by playing a sequence of images in a row, much like this horse animation. In many 2D video games, that sequence of images is placed in what we call a sprite sheet, which is just how it sounds. It's a sheet of sprites. Pixelpad already has some sprite sheets you can use in the asset store. Open up the asset store. You might have come across these already. If you look at the images that are moving, those are the ones that will have sprite sheets. If you add one to your game, say the idle here, I'll call it player idle. It will show up like this in your assets. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom out and view the whole image. This is a sprite sheet and it has a certain amount of images all in a row that when combined make an animation. It requires a bit of code to transform it into that animation. The first step is setting up the sprite sheet as a variable. Head over to the player class, and in the start, we're going to create that sprite sheet. I'm going to call it idle SS. The SS is short for sprite sheet. Setting up a sprite sheet is similar to how we set up a sprite in the first place. We use the same sprite function, and we still tell it which sprite we want to use. But afterwards, we add two other pieces of information, how many rows the sprite sheet has and how many columns it has. If we look at our player idle PNG again, it only has the one row. But if you count how many columns it has, 
have reached the number 11. So inside this sprite function, we're going to say comma 1, comma 11. This tells Pixelpad how, how to set up the sprite sheet for the animation. The next step is creating an animation out of that sprite sheet. Much like any other app variable, we start by giving it a name. In this case, we also have to say self dot in front of it. I'm going to name it idle anim, short for idle animation. And it equals new animation. This is a function that sets up an animation for us. And this function requires four pieces of information. The first is the sprite sheet that we want to use, which is this one up here that we've named idle ss. The next is the speed of the animation. I'm going to say 30. The next two pieces of information are the start sprite and the end sprite in our sprite sheet, which I'll explain in just a second. For now, type 0, 10. Let me explain the start sprite and the end sprite inside Sketchpad. Here, we have the idle SS sprite sheet. Now, when we set up that sprite sheet, we tell Pixelpad to split up the sprites into each individual piece. What Pixelpad also does is give them a number starting at zero. Each sprite after that also gets a number in a sequential order. So we go all the way from zero up to 10. And this is the sprite's number. For our animation, we started at sprite number zero and we ended at sprite number 10. That's telling the animation to play all the images in a row and then loop around and start again. Some sprite sheets can get more complex and have multiple animations in one. In that situation, you might use different numbers when you're setting up the animation. The animations included in the asset store are all single animations, so we don't have to worry about that. Now that we've created this animation, all we have to do is set it. We can do that with the set animation function. Set animation requires two pieces of information. First is which object we want to put this animation on. Since we're inside the player, we'll use self. Next is the animation that we want to use. In this case, I'll use self.idleAnim. One thing we will need to fix though, we'll need to go into each level and remove the line where we add the sprite to Astro. Otherwise, we override the animation we're trying to put on the player by putting a sprite on instead. If you hit play right now, you'll see that the player has started moving. Our animation has been set. Let's add the running animation next. We'll need to add the sprite from the asset store. It's called Astro Run. I'll name it player run. The process is the same. In here, I'm going to say run ss, and it's going to be a very similar setup. However, this sprite sheet is a little bit longer than the previous one. We have 12 sprites instead of 11. So we need to make that modification when we're setting up the columns. We still have one row, but now we have 12 columns.
we have to reflect that change when we make our animation too. I'm going to call this one run anim. It's going to be a new animation as well. And it's going to use the run sprite sheet at the same speed and the same starting sprite. But since there are 12 images in this sprite sheet, I want to go all the way up to 11 here. And if I want to test that, I can just change the set animation to use run animation instead of idle animation. And look at them go. In order to switch between the animations, we need to set up a little bit more code. First, we need to add a boolean. I'm going to call it self.running and it's going to equal false at the beginning of the game. Let's also make sure that we switch this back to idle animation at the beginning of the game. Inside the loop, we've got to look at our movement code a little bit more. When we press the D or A key, we should start running and we should play that animation. But we only want to set the animation once, which is why we'll use that running variable. First, we check if we're not already running by saying if self.running is equal to false. If so, we'll actually set that animation. We'll say set animation on self and we'll use the self.runanim. Next, we want to say self.running is now equal to true. That way, this line will only run once. It'll set the animation and then not run again because running is now true. We also want to do the same thing inside the next if statement. It's going to be the exact same code. Next, we want to check if the player is not pressing a key. The easiest way to set that up is with an else. So we want to check first if we are running and if so, we're going to set the animation to be the idle instead and then stop running. And then we say self.running equals false. There's just one small problem. This else is only paired up with this if statement and not this one. When we use an else, we're making a choice between this if and this else. That's it. So how do we make a choice between three options? Well, we do that by using an else if statement. In Python, this is shortened to be the word elif. Now, we check if we're pressing the D key, or if we're pressing the A key, or we're pressing neither key. And like that, your animations will switch depending on if you're pressing a button. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll look at adding a smarter enemy, also with animations. I'll see you there.